Hello, welcome to the artclasses.com QA episode 16. Today we are going to talk about different ways to use texture brushes and I'm going to do some demo on that. And also we are going to talk about different kind of job other than concept art for illustrator like what uh, any type of job that you can probably have. Uh, it's not just a concept art. There, there are many type of job for artists and also um, how to uh, render material sort of thing. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit and explain how material study works. And then do you need to be a jack of all trades to be in the game industry? And also um, uh, what color, how many color or what kind of temperature that uh, should be when you are painting a portrait or a face. All right, let's get started. Oh, wait, um, the tablet giveaway is still going on. Um, so in the end of July, I'm going to announce the winner for the Tercom tablet right here. And then on the next month, I still have one more Tercom and then um, in August. So and then in September, Hubion is going to send me, I think, one brand new Hubion tablet that they just released. Uh, it looks pretty cool and I will do the uh, open box. Um, unboxing for that tablet and also you can find me on any social media preferably uh, Instagram and S Snapchat you can just go Instagram will be a ZTEPTRA01 and Snapchat would just be ZTEPTRA uh, Facebook uh, it's Facebook start to suck so I don't really use them anymore you can also follow me on Twitter and Patreon alright guys uh, just gonna be slash ZTEPTRA uh, alright guys let's get started all right, welcome to the Q&A session. Let's start question number one. Sam Reeves writes, I've watched your video for years and never failed to learn something monumental. I once had a job that suddenly dropped graphic design in my lap. When I had no period art training and never used Photoshop, it was videos like yours that keep me from drowning. And a couple of years later, People start asking me to design logo, uh, even paint book cover. So thank you. Uh, you're welcome. It's probably some other people video, <laughs> not necessarily mine. Um, now my question, I am settling into what I consider the second half of my life. I'm 45 due to medical reasons. Stick too close to home. Uh, what kind of reception in the professional world would a middle-aged self-taught beginner receive if try to have a go at maybe some part-time or freelance fantasy fiction artwork I know Hollywood is probably out of question but how about games comic book and cards okay um, this is gonna be pretty tough um, if you say you're a beginner then that's gonna be pretty tough to break into anything um, either tech or video games or books or cards uh, you have to look at like if say if you if you think you your portfolio is good enough to make cards uh, if you look at some other cards that are out there like the uh, book of five ring or Paizo Pathfinder or um, Game of Thrones by um, uh, fantasy fight game or Star Wars cards or something like that uh, look at those publisher and see how your art is comparable to uh, those uh, art that are coming out or uh, the one that pays really good are Wizard of the Coast and Magic the Gathering uh, the rest of them are just not paying very well I used to work uh, on the freelance stuff while I was working full-time also for um, Paizo and um, uh, Fan uh, um, Song of Fire and Fire <laughs> okay I just kind of blanked out for a second so when if you like uh, break in you just gotta if you send them the first time you didn't get any respond you can uh, respond to them hey uh, what do I need to improve on and ask them nicely a lot of time they will tell you what to work on but if they're really busy they're not gonna tell you like uh, if 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 it's like way way too like if it's too much for them to like give you feedback and then you have to keep working and send them again so cards would be a pretty good option uh, but it's not gonna pay you a lot of money so uh, it depends on your um, financial situation if you are cool you don't want to like get a lot of money then doing cards would be totally fine uh, comic books uh, you're gonna have to go to the convention so 
uh, since you are not mobile, then it's going to be really hard because you have to go to the Comic Con or some kind of con at anywhere and then you have to go meet the editor. Usually San Diego Comic Con and um, the con in New York will have the Marvel and DC editor there and then you can sort of, a, they have like a portfolio review section. So it's going to be like all day so you can go there and have a portfolio review. I think they're still doing it. I haven't done it for, I don't know, 15 years ago I did. And I kind of got into the DC, but I never get to do it because uh, I got a job at uh, ArenaNet instead. Um, and it's full-time, and uh, they pay for you health insurance, medical, and everything. But if you work for a comic book, then you consider a contractor or a freelance, so you're not going to get any health benefit or anything like that. So you're going to have to pay all the bill by yourself. Uh, another option is basically you can find... That's a lot of smaller game company now because of the mobile explosion. So you can kind of look around for the company right around your area. I'm not sure where you're at. If you're in San Francisco, then you are pretty lucky because, or then area around there, so you can kind of work with them. But some of the game company are, they have people who work remote, but that's pretty rare. Uh, most of the time they want you to be in the studio, so they can like, hey, uh, let's get this done, let's get that done, let's get this done. And you can have to be pretty versatile and pretty quick. So. Um, what I think is for the freelance, if you got a job doing the card game, that would probably be best because once you get, once you're in, uh, they will al always sending you a uh, assignment for you to do, but it's going to take them maybe a few months uh, to get a paycheck for whatever, how many you do. Yeah, but uh, it's going to be pretty consistent basically so once you get it uh, they're going to send you another one in a few months they're going to send you another assignment in a few months they're going to send you another assignment uh, throughout the years and eventually um, when I was doing it then um, you can get to do like uh, maybe a small card and then uh, you're going to get to do maybe environment and then if you're doing good and you stick with the work stick around for a while then you're going to do get to do the uh, the page and then you might get to do the spread or eventually cover or sometimes a box cover. But um, I've never get that far because I quit before that. So um, so that would be a pretty good option. That would be cards, I think. Or you can um, try to build your fan base on the internet and start your own. If you can write, then you can do your comic book. Because I've seen a bunch of people doing a comic book and they're using Patreon or some kind of a payment system on the website that they can... Uh, make or, or sustain their uh, business model so anything that on the web that if you could find a way to monetize your work then that would be the best bet or the cards company uh, for game company and, and comic book you have to go to the convention but if I don't know if on a comic book if you get to know the editor or you talk to them then um, usually um, you might be able to do but comic book is different because uh, you have the, the oh, it's penciler, inker, and colorist. So it depends on whatever you want to do. And most of the time, colorist, nowadays they have a bunch of studio that do color. So they got a bunch of artists within the studio. So it become a company itself. Um, but penciler, a lot of time, uh, you, you're going to get uh, to be like more like one person individually. So you get to get the name of the pencil. But you have to be really good. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think hearts would be good. Thanks for writing in, Sam. I mean, yeah, Sam Reeves. All right. So if you guys are wondering what this is, so I'm just going to plug myself a little bit. I'm just working on this at the moment. Um, this will be our level five Patreon. Um, so I'll probably get it done maybe uh, tonight or tomorrow or something. And then I'm going to release it next week, which is uh, if you get onto my Patreon level five before the end of July, then you're going to get a bunch, everything basically from level 1, level 2, level 3 to level 5. And this was part of level 5. And on level 2, you're going to get a basic uh, walking and running and a mail post. And then how to paint uh, basic hair rendering and then uh, portrait. So that's level 2. And then I'm going to show you level 3 later. So let's get on to the next question. All right. Poe Hero writes... I had no idea you work at ArenaNet. That makes so much sense. This means I've been a fan of your work for like 10 years. Mind blow? Uh, no question? Uh, 
Okay, I think that Jeff was just like a statement. All right, um, next question. Graphic speed art rights. What kind of concept art are there? Uh, I'm only familiar with character, props, vehicle, environment, concept artist. Uh, is there concept art on how a scene will play out, like composition or key scene? Yeah, they call a key shot concept artist. So there are, like, if you're working in film, um, I don't do a lot of that. Like, once in a while, I'll get lucky. But um, there'll be uh, people, like, most of the time, there'll be a matte painter, a concept artist, which is... Uh, those guys are like pre-production and then there's going to be people who's post-production who's like a special effect or something like that but um, yeah there are many kinds in game mostly will be character props um, vehicle props vehicle are kind of the same character creature can be the same person but uh, a lot of time you have to kind of separate between creature and character but uh, it depends on how big the studio is. If the studio is really big, then you can have the guy who just uh, design creature um, solely on creature. And character will be on a character, just a character. And then on in props, uh, usually props um, and vehicle, if it's, if it's not like the main, well, not necessarily. If the props is, is a small prop like a, a smith shop or... Uh, tavern or something like that nothing um, gigantic or nothing that would be like okay the cast of this guy or that guy if it's a regular prop that you see like a mundane prop usually uh, the intern would do it and on the vehicle if it's like a cartwheel or something like that then mostly the small prop the intern would do it but if you have like a, the, the props or the cast or the landmark um, that would be part of the environment so you can have to uh, have the con environment concept artist uh, or senior artist environment to design that and then uh, once you have those set design which usually they'll do a, a key you know uh, what do you call that the, the high concept design then um, they'll send it down to the, the intern guy that will break down those big concept scene into smaller props or smaller part of um, the, the castle or something uh, so you have like a big scene and then you break it down to smaller ones. And then, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. But all right, uh, level three on my Patreon will get this uh, portrait here on top of the thing that I already get because level three will get level two stuff also. And then you get this character illustration or design, uh, most likely sketch design. And uh, oh, where's the other one? Then this guy. So yeah, you get this guy, that guy, and um, where is the portrait here? So that's level three. So next question, the Bobim Kid one two three writes: Do you always stick to two to three brushes, or do you change them from time to time? And if you stick to those same, which served for what? Let's say one is for blocking color, other is for blending and so on. I have downloaded a bunch of brushes and I still can't find few that I'm comfortable with. Um, okay, here is uh, the thing. Brush doesn't really make your art better. So forget brush in the beginning. Um, if you see my painting or if you ever download my premium tutorial, you notice that or even uh, a lot of people when they have brushes or something they'll have the go-to brush which is um, the brush that uh, I use this flat default most of the time and some people will have similar which is flat but then they have something different so um, something that create a more uh, consistent color base uh, would make a really good brush. You can even use this default Photoshop to start off with. Then um, usually I will start with the for if you just look at um just look at uh, I'll show you this video. Just click on either this video here, the dragon and the hydra, and you notice that I usually start off with a regular default brush to get the silhouette going, and then I make a selection and I make I may use a texture brush to create like some kind of texture on top and create better lighting like on the rock here that you can see. Um, so there are certain brushes that I use for those. 
and also there are other things that the texture brush can really do very good is that um, let's see here it can make a really nice transition say if you have the hard edge here right and you want to make a transition you can use any of the texture brush here pick that just see what I mean so it make a nice transition in between hard edge and soft edge you pick the color in the, the middle part uh, the, the color in between and there are texture brush that will create scratch or something so it depends you know people like one type of texture brush um, that I say if I have this brush that I use for transition some other people might use it for other purpose so it really depend on, depends on the person on what um, they're going to use it for and the only way really to find out is just that um, you can download a bunch of other people's brush and not you can you're gonna have to use every single one of them or you know try them out and just play with it um, and you know if you don't like how it works then just go do new ones and try to understand how the brush is made like if I select certain brush here um, try to understand like what are these for like shape dynamic scattered what would it make the brush different texture you can make your own brush based on like analyze the brush that you download and try to make your own and you are probably gonna get better so and then you can go in and kind of like okay saturation jitter what does it do um, uh, do brush you can pick a different type of brush and you like, have a combination of both brush and then you can select even texture that you can go with whatever the brush that you're gonna use just play with it don't don't just download other people brush and, and not analyzing it and um, you know a lot of people who are really good or getting really good they analyze everything that they, they download or they even look at other people's stuff and they reverse engineer it and they're like okay how the hell did they do that so just you know be mindful or be uh, have an analytical mind and sort of uh, try to uh, work out your ways and the way I use brush might be different than other people or other artists entirely but just go watch these two videos that I mentioned and you know how I start out with just a default and then I use the texture brush on top and sometimes I will just you know paint with default and I don't really need texture brush at all so um, alright let's go to the next question alright uh, Kelvin Valencia writes sir when do I need to use more than one or two hue for the skin especially the face I notice some artists use something like dark pink or base color and use yellow on the highlight is it influenced by color of the light setting can it be light sword that is yellow so we put a little yellow on the highlight many thanks um well that's a pretty good question so usually if you paint a regular default lighting which is normal blue light or normal um, daylight then you're gonna get if you look at people on the regular setting then you can get redder nose um, the this area uh, let's do green would be the warm this would be warm also and when you get up to that zone this would be cool when you get below the shin that would be cool so um, it would be toward the cool color it's not yellow or red um, this will be toward the cooler color so because of the background um, usually you get redder on the nose and the cheeks uh, usually the nose would be uh, more so than, than the cheeks and if you get like a different this one is a little bit of backlit so you won't like in this one you see the whole lighting coming in right so you see pretty much everything if you have backlit then you're gonna get to see slightly a little bit of that but it's in in the shadow a little more subdued um, 
and in this one is a regular lighting so it's also in the blue light you can still get the just think of it a warm cool cool basically that's what it is except if you are in the extreme lighting um, like if you are set in the um, a very let's see let me so here are a couple of the strong lighting condition um, so you can just go there so if you have that light and and the light just come in and the rest of them will be a uh, dark area then you won't get to see that so if it's in the shadow or if it's get uh, canceled by a really strong influence of light or absence of the daylight then you won't be able to to see if it's red or if it's whatever and if you look at movie screenshot uh, at night you see the whole face is like blue you won't see any red or any uh, uh, cool or warm zone. Uh, it will mostly be influenced by the light because the light source is not. But if it's a natural light, you see the daylight. If it's clear, then most likely you will see those type of stuff. But if you play around with the light like this one, um, with fire reflect off of the face, then you don't have to worry about that. All you have to worry about is just to get the light light setting in there right. And this is like a, a two two light source so you have like a red light here and another blue light over there so you are more concerned about those two color of light that you try to make uh, them balance up so basically it's that and all this one are going to be in page one this one is level four this one is level three so um, before the end of July then you can get uh, this one is from June but you can still get it on my gum road so it's pretty basic uh, uh, face painting tutorial so all right I hope that answer your question let's go on to the next all right um, the mix I am right hey Zia can you make tutorial how to paint leather parts or how to choose color to make painting more realistic great video very helpful thanks greeting from Serbia so um, how to choose color to make painting more realistic that's a uh, pretty hard um there's no particular color that will make your painting more realistic um, it depends on the light and the best recommendation i if you want a more realistic stuff best recommendation i would um, make you do is probably do master study uh, go to john singer sergeant and um, study screenshot um, master study and screenshot that would take you um, a long way to like you could be pretty good if you do that like uh, pretty much every day and as for um, painting leather it's not just the leather part it has to do with here right metal leather fur skin and cloth some of the part that's in there so you have to do material study so it's um, each object has specular level and if you notice on the metal you have the highlight would be like a hundred and then the shadow would be all the way to 50 40 and in this one on the bottom go to 30 30 something so it's between um, 40 30 to about 100 and on leather, you measure it, it's 29 it's be the dark, and then if I measure the light, it will be 39 or 40. So the range of leather would be short. And you can add a little bit of highlight. On metal, the range would be high, would be wide. So that's uh, metal. And then um, on fur, fur is different, it depends on if you have like a big uh, fur or I mean, um, what color of the fur you are you have dark fur or light fur cloth would be the least um, it doesn't reflect the light so it basically absorb the light so in cloth you see two color of the cloth if you have like a, a correct lighting onto the cloth on metal or bronze or anything metallic you don't get to see true color because it's always reflect the light off of it the only way you're gonna see metal true color is in the overcast setting or uh, in the not directly hit the light and not in the shadow so it's in the overcast area or cloudy so you get enough light to see the true color of the metal maybe this metal poly like light gray or something 
and another one would be glass, chrome, some other like wood. So you're gonna have to just Google material study, then you will find how to make your character and all those material on top of your character looks good. Or you can just go look at this video here. Uh, I explained it a little bit, but then uh, to see the full video, you're gonna have to download it from either Gumroad or on my website because it's about a few hours long. All right, uh, last question here just for today all right so Shin Retsu writes do you need to be a Jaguar trade kind of person to be able to work in the video game industry when I look at the studio here from where I'm from they ask so many skill sets they require you to be able to do 2d 3d code programming animate all at the same time so how good do I need to be really Thank you for the video, by the way. Um, I think if they require you to do a lot of those things, they are probably either a startup or a really small game company. Uh, and a lot of small game companies do need you to be a jack of all trade because they're going to they're gonna have like a smaller staff and um, they're not going to have a lot of capital to invest in the, you know a bunch of people to work in them. So it's probably about maybe... 10 15 people size studio if you need to do that or maybe smaller um, but if you have like about 40 people up you're gonna start to become specialized like you're gonna do creature you're gonna do environment you're gonna do props you're gonna do some other thing so it depends on how big the studio you're working with are if you're working with casual game then yeah of course if you if they look for a, a jack of all trade then of course it's just going to be average you don't have to be phenomenal um, because you have to be able to do skill set and nowadays people with all kinds of skill are really hard to find because um, a lot of studio nowadays uh, take longer time to make video games it used to be when I first started I could crank out a character model like three character model in low poly in one day uh, without texture and everything but uh, later stage it took at least three to four days to finish just one character so and it's uh, the same type of character but the technology have come a long way and then you need to compete with other company to make them look as good if you guys are competitive like competitors um, but if you work with the casual game and they don't you know they're not like triple a so they're not um a, a long like you know the play time usually could go up to uh 120 hours of playtime or more um, if it's a casual game you can just like you know play on the go and then you know you play uh, 20 30 minutes a day and then you stop you, you go on the next then it depends on how epic the game is like if you look at let's just say uh, Witcher or um, Dark Soul those are big games and everyone that works there are specialized in something um, you're gonna have to be either and in film it's get even worse you're gonna specialize to do just specific a certain um, movement like uh, I don't know just you just get to design a set interior or whatever it's it become more specific the bigger the company your jobs gonna be more specific but if your company is small then you can have to do everything so basically it's just the size of the company and the capital available for them to utilize uh, for uh, to make the company run to run the company basically all right so i hope i answer you all your question and yeah there's a lot of uh questions today so i think i get a lot done i'm trying to catch up with a bunch of um, uh questions so because this uh i do it once a week so i still have a lot more to do so okay uh on my patreon i will have the pain over and critique session if you're my patreon uh once a month and if i reach my second goal um, then I will have it twice a month. So if you do, if you look at my tutorial and do some work, you can just go there and um, post your work, and I will select uh, just randomly and I'll just panel and give you critique. So that's a pretty uh, economic way to get feedback from me instead of taking my class. You can go to Patreon and just pledge, and if you want to work some on something, then just post it, right? All right, and also the pa Patreon this month you will get her 
um, this one will be on level 5 and on level 5 you get the rest of the tutorial also level 5 you have this guy Aegon also I just finished that just um, this week um, also you will get Harley Quinn which is quite different I don't know why I'm trying to do different things and you will get um, this one so it's also slightly different from my usual um, style I'm just trying to experiment and try to show you guys how to do things in a different way basically um, because and some people ask me why do I have so many styles it's not that I do have style it's just kind of like I just look at the certain style that I look around Instagram or whatever and they have cool style I just kind of like oh, take a look at them and like hey maybe I could pull that off uh, I don't know but uh, my usual style is basically this girl and that one because that's basically from Guild Wars days um, I still kind of do the same stuff and that just basically uh, the way I usually paint um, without having to think about it too much like I paint this way faster than I will do the stylized way um, and on level this are level 5 for those at level 4 you're gonna get uh, this girl Mulan character design uh, with a little bit of stylized also uh, pretty similar to those stylized stuff and then you get this uh, San San uh, that's maybe level 4 and then the rest of them down so you can just check that on my patreon all right guys well thank you for watching and the tablet is still going on and thank you for all your support and thank you for watching and thank you for all my patri patron supporters um, have a good weekend guys bye bye okay guys thank you for watching the video and here are all my patreon that's uh, now it's increasing so it's thank you very much you guys this is uh, from level four and up so thank you cubinator sebastian Rob roberto herb hanuman um john holloway antonio hernandez john cypos doc Taro, steve young um hasan ali paul castle dominique samuel gary leon jeff savage Vilas, Richard, Luna, Nera, Eric, Austin, Goy, Hammer, Tom, Angel, and Joris. So thank you very much. Uh, these are all my, these are the level up and Patreon supporter on July. And if you're interested, I release a pretty cool video on Patreon every month. And you can go just follow it on Patreon. You see me post an image every week. And again, uh, video tutorial downloadable giveaway on Instagram, instagram.com slash ZTFTara. So if you want a tutorial, premium tutorial download of your choice, I'll give it away every week. And tablet giveaway is still going on, so you just become a subscriber on YouTube, and then um, I'm gonna just gonna send, randomly select you guys each month. Have a good day or night or whatever, wherever you are. Okay, bye-bye.